Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me once again. What I'm trying to do today is just bring you very up to the moment information and news that might be helpful to you. I'll skip all the newspaper data that we receive in the online data. You can uh, wade through that yourself. Uh, but a couple of things uh, that I think you'll find very interesting. Number one, I want to talk about a new policy that uh, was is being implemented as of March 1st. And that has to do with uh, the internet. Uh, for so many years, the internet was the wild west. Uh, it was a proverbial gray area. Uh, you try to do what you want to do and hopefully you're okay. Uh, if you become brutally offensive uh, to the authorities in China, uh, we found out that uh, they have the great cyber wall of China and we've known that for some time. Everything is highly censored. A number of people have been commissioned uh, to monitor it. And it's basically put under the category of national security. Uh, so anything that's uh, frontally offensive to the Communist Party or anything that I guess they would label to be untrue, they're almost synonymous. Uh, anything that the authorities feel might create societal unrest or disharmony inside the country is likely going to be censored. You may be issued a warning, you may not. For foreigners, uh, they pretty much just clip us off and that's the end of it. Um, however, there's no more gray as of March 1st. Now, what to address a subset of a subset. The subset is anything that might have any religious overtones. And the policy is very, very clear on that moving forward. Uh, allow me just to read a very few uh, comments. Um, article 36. Anyone who engages in internet religious information service should apply to the religious affairs department and stipulate the material and the time frame, and it should be carried out according to the religious policies of China. So now you need to secure a license. These measures are jointly formulated by the National Religious Affairs, the Cyberspace Administration, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, the Ministry of Public Security, and Ministry of State Security. So I hope that you don't need a hammer to hit you over the head to understand. Uh, they aren't saying this is just a minor thing. And when they put it under the heading of national security, uh, we need to take this extremely serious. The measures adhere to the unity between protecting citizens' freedom of religious belief and safeguarding national ideological security, between safeguarding the legitimate rights and interests of religious believers and practicing core socialist values. It embodies the principles of protecting the legitimate, stopping the illegal, curbing extremism, resisting infiltration and combating crime. So be appraised. Um, one word which requires interpretation so that you can read um, English the way that it was intended as it was written. This is combating extreme extremism. For example, if anyone were to say on the internet that Taoism is the only true religion and all the others are wrong, that would likely be construed as being extreme. If somebody was to say the only legitimate religion is Buddhism, they may interpret that as extremism. Probably not in that case, because uh, as you know, Chineseiness, Buddhism, uh, and 
uh, some of these things tend to amalgamate and uh, come together, same with Confucianism. But if you were to say that Christianity is the only truth, the only means of attaining heaven, they would very likely assume that that's an extremist position because it divides the country and they're looking for unity and China is going to allow religion as long as it doesn't bring division and competition among their people. One more, a couple more. Under licensing, Article 6, requiring licensing includes the internet, BBS, blog, microblog, public accounts, instant communication tools, network broadcasting, forms such as words, pictures, audio, and video, which offer religious teachings, religious canon, religious knowledge, religious culture, religious activities, such as information service, all require licensing. So this is a very broad encompassing regulation and uh, so don't look at a particular technology or uh, say that we're no longer included. You probably are. Anything except for face-to-face -face involvement and publishing of printed literature is likely to come under this particular heading. If approved, religious information on the internet shall not use religion to incite subversion of state power, oppose the leadership of the Communist Party of China, undermine the socialist system, national unity, stoical stability, and propagate extremism or religious fanaticism, nor interfere with the implementation of the state systems of justice, education, marriage, or undermine the harmonious coexistence among different religions or, or believers and non-believers or induce minors to believe in religion. Uh, may the wise hear. And uh, if you in any way, shape or form uh, in your particular uh, work or service wish to be involved in anything that be construed to be religious, uh, then this policy is something you need to get your hands on. Make sure that you have a trustworthy translator, study it, uh, and give it some serious thought. Uh, it remains to be seen how many licenses will be granted. What I can tell you is even the authorized religious organizations the Buddhist temples, uh, the large city churches who have been online now for decades, even they must uh, find a uh, secure license moving forward. And uh, as I understand it, each licensed entity will be required to have an auditor for their content. So be aware, that's number one. I hope that's helpful to those of you to whom it is pertinent. Many of us are wondering when we can travel back into China without a 14-day quarantine. Well, the ninth edition of the COVID situation and suggestions by the central government, uh, dated March 14, 2022, gives us some hints, though nothing specific. Uh, the official link for those of you that are Chinese readers will be page 32. Uh, there are four points that we need to pay attention to. Number one, patients with mild symptoms are required uh, to be quarantined, but no longer required to be quarantined uh, moving forward. So let me state that at the moment, even if you have a mild symptom, it's a 14 day quarantine. Moving forward, if you're deemed mild, they will not necessarily quarantine for the requisite 14 days. Number two, recovered, recovered patients um, will be required to stay home for a week 
but not required to be quarantined anymore. So that's encouraging. Uh, you may have read in other sources that China is slowly moving away from the zero tolerance policy. And I, from what I'm not here to criticize or not criticize, I'm a doctor, but not that kind of doctor. And so uh, each country deals with this in their own way. Number three, the new test standard index will match the international standard, which is CT greater than 35, not greater than 40 anymore. Now, I couldn't explain that to you if you held the gun to my head and asked me to. I'm just sharing it with you. Number four, Paxlovid is allowed to be used in China for a cure uh, instead of requiring only traditional Chinese medicine. And basically, as I understand it, uh, there's a turning point here and it looks like instead of saying you must meet the Chinese standard for vaccination, they're going to expand it, look at the international standard. Now, whether the USA standard is the same as international, again, talk to your doctor, talk to your medical staff there at your business. So it, the news is this, it looks like and sounds like there's, they may be in preparation to open China up again. Uh, just, by the way, let me clarify, just from the standpoint of COVID. Now, we all know that there's many other macro issues taking place in our world, uh, which could affect Sino-American relationships. I'll just throw my hat in the ring and leave it at this for this visit, um, I'm hoping that in some way, uh, even with the military hostilities going on in, our, on in our world, that perhaps, maybe, even this can draw China and USA closer together as they share some common goals. And so let's hope for that. And uh, that's the news I have for you. One has to do with the internet regulations, and the other is just the, the leaking of information from the party. And normally that's the way they do things. Uh, you have a party document, then someday the, in more layman's terms, these principles will be revealed in Xinhua News Services uh, and the party approved publications and then eventually they'll be announced and a date will be set. So you may want to look into your plane tickets. Hopefully we'll all get back over to China and uh, I'll see you in beautiful downtown Beijing. Bye for now.